getting fooled twice in one night, but that's possible, especially with our next act. After my first Foolless appearance, I left without a trophy. And from that day on, I vowed to someday win that plastic treasure. So I began training. I hired a personal trainer from Craigslist. More magic, more magic, good. Then I used Harry Houdini's own workout regimen, as well as special dexterity exercises and magician-focused strength training that I devised myself. I trained all day, every day. I trained until I couldn't train anymore. And then, I, there was more training. Yeah, I kept training. Finally, I felt emotionally and physically ready to face Penn and Teller. But then, I did some soul searching. I realized it wasn't about the trophy. I got into magic because of the friends that I'd make along the way. I mean, I made friends with a rabbit. It's great to be back on Fool Us. Penn, tell her I know that this is your show, uh, but this time you're in my house. We're doing this virtually. Uh, which, by the way, uh, tell her, tell her, uh, I think you're muted. <laughs> so I love creating magic tricks as much as you do. Uh, Penn, uh, tell her you've spoken to me. You've recommended some great books to me. Tell her you told me to get uh, Jermaine the Wizard. Fantastic book, such a great recommendation. I know you have a room in your house dedicated to your library. This is my, my modest library. But some of these books were written by heroes of mine. Like, this is a great book, but it also teaches you about pandering. <laughs> it's a great book. Uh, but also, a lot of these books are written by very close friends of mine. Like, uh, this was written by Ken Weber. It's called Maximum Entertainment 2.0. Some of the books that I have, they're books that every single magician would have, like uh, Expert at the Card Table, which was written in 1902. This is a, this is considered the Bible of card cheating and card magic. But I thought it would be better if, instead of me choosing a book that I already have, if you help me choose the next book that I'll buy. How does that sound? Oh, it's good, good. Great, uh, I should say, there was a time in my life when I had a spot on my bookshelf cleared off for a trophy, in case I ever fooled you two. But over time, that space got filled up with books. So I don't have room for a trophy anymore, but I do have room for one more book. And I try to buy my books based on the recommendations from the Conjuring Arts Research Center and their literary archive. Uh, they post influential magic books. It's like required reading for magicians. So here's what I'll do. I'm, I'm gonna scroll through their page here. And as I scroll through, at any point, uh, Penn, just go ahead and shout stop. And when you say stop, I'll just let go with my thumb. Whatever book it lands on, that'll be the next book that I commit to buying. How does that sound? Good. Great. So, Penn, I'll get a good scroll going here. Wherever you'd like, just go ahead and just shout stop. Stop. There. So I'm going to let go, and you have landed on... <laughs> this is a picture of their library. That is not very helpful. Do you want me to scroll one up or one down? Uh, down. Here we go. This is perfect. This is a book. This is uh, Focus by Phil Goldstein, kind of a legend, a.k.a. Max Maven. Uh, from my understanding, that's a great book. Are you happy with that book, Ben? Sure. I mean, you could have said go two more, right? You could have kept me going a little bit longer, and we would have gotten to, uh, to Pure Effect by Darren Brown. Also another phenomenal book, from what I understand, very difficult to find, uh, very, very rare. Do you want to switch to Pure Effect, or do you want to stick with Focus? Stick with Focus. Okay, I mean, you could have stopped me even farther, right? You could have changed your mind to... Uh, the next one's The Mental Mysteries and Other Writings of William Larson Sr. Would you like to, would you like to switch to that one, or do you want to stick with focus? Yeah, let's stick with the Larson book. Oh, you want to go to the Larson book? Unbelievable. You started with really wanting focus, and then you changed to the Bill Larson book, uh, The Mental Mysteries and Other Writings of William, uh, William Larson. You're positive. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Would it be amazing if I had that book on my bookshelf already? Mm, fairly. 
I mean, I could have bought every single book that it sure. recommends. I think it would have been much more amazing if that was the only book that I had on my bookshelf. It would be. It appears as though there's only one book on my bookshelf, but Penn, this was the book that you originally wanted. This is Focus by Phil Goldstein. It's not the one that you changed your mind to. But if I'm not mistaken, I think the William Larson book, that's about uh, magic tricks with twist endings. And luckily, a lot of my dust jackets are on the wrong books. You know, now that I think about it, I guess I do have room for a trophy. <laughs> if you have an extra one laying around. <laughs> Keeping busy? Oh, always, Allison. Uh, I was trying to prepare for this as best I could, and so I, I popped the I popped the lenses out of my glasses just because I didn't want there to be a, a glare. So I'm wearing contact lenses, which have been bothering me the entire time. Just give me a second, oh. Allison. I'm so sorry. Oh, jeez. Oh my word. They're they're very they're large and and not clear. Oh, yeah, ah. I know. I've got astigmatism, so that's kind of the whole deal with that. By the way, I, I can't see anything anymore. Right. One just personal recommendation, maybe get a new eye doctor. Just Yeah, it's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah. You do a lot of comedy magic. Which do you like more, comedy or magic? I like them both for different reasons, and I really like to blend them together. I mean, the thing with magic is that feeling of amazement can't be beat on this sort of... Uh, and this sort of like level that makes your brain look at things differently. But at the same time, comedy, I mean, it's universal and the feeling of making a room full of people laugh all at once, it's just completely intoxicating. So I love both of my children equally. Oh, good answer, good answer. Okay, Ben, let's see if you can get yourself a trophy for that bookcase. Hey, Ben. You know, I want to tell the people uh, that watch the show a little bit about this trick before we talk about the trick, and that is that I know that uh, you and Tell are quite good friends, and you wrote them uh, an email saying you had a great new trick and that you were telling all your friends about it, and Teller wrote back, don't tell me, go to the producers, do it on Fool Us. And like everybody, we don't know who's going to be on, we don't know what trick they're going to do, but if this fools us, it's Teller's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I will blame him completely. The trophy's coming out of his share of the pay. Uh, what a great stop. We'd love to have you here. It's nice that, uh, that we get to see where you live and all that. It's wonderful. And I love your comic style. You just have, you know, so many people who do comedy are so aggressive, but you are so gentle and laid back and never forced. It's just a really nice style you have and really good tricks and really good thinking. And we just love this. We love the fact that it deals with magic books, but uh, we don't think you fooled us. And I think I slipped a few words in there, I hope, that give you an idea. No problem. Handsome Jack sold me his trophy for like 30 bucks anyway. <laughs> well, you didn't fool him, but you are wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank 